we're going to kick off with the most forthcoming topical project, which is a confession. It's pretty much what we've come to expect from you, though. Hard-hitting crime story, but with the very personal angle already evident on screen. So could you tell us, for the uninformed, the, the background to the story? I think what it's, what it's about is, it, is if drama is about um, conflict, mm -hmm. which it is, then you're looking for the extremes of conflict. And so that brings, obviously, that, 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 the, those areas of love, um, hate, and, you know, I would argue crime, uh, wherein lies love and hate. I'm not a depressive sort of person. I'm not, um, you know, ghoulish or, or, or black-hearted or anything. It's just that I think, it's the old journalist in me, just thinks there's a good story there. Are you feeling more free because of your success, mm -hmm. asterisk Oscar nomination? Um, are you feeling more critical, that you're flexing quite critical muscles that you perhaps wouldn't have done earlier in your writing career? Well, two things. One, people come to me with things. Mm -hmm. I always thought I had to come up with the idea. Mm. Philomena was Steve Coogan's idea, not mine, and he came to me with it. Mm -hmm. So that told me something, mm -hmm. that actually there are people out there who also have great ideas. So I've written stuff that wasn't my idea now. Mm -hmm. What it does is it, 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 it gets you meetings. You, you can get in, you can have, you can get, you can pitch an idea and get the meeting, but it still won't get something over the finish line if, if, if it's not good enough. So maybe I'm a bit more ambitious and a bit more expansive in the way I've approached the project mm -hmm. and in, in the writing. My process is to go deeper and deeper and deeper into, into, the, into the actually what happened. Mm. And therein, that's where I'm finding my that's where I'm finding the stuff that's unique, that really inspires me. And my job is then, that's the material, and it's then finding a way through it. I read that the reason you ended up writing Fool's Gold yourself was because you couldn't find yeah. a screenwriter. Yeah. So I, I still didn't quite trust yeah. that I could do it. I think I'd, yes, I had rather loftily tried to speak to some of the great writers of the day, and, you know, the ones that answered, you're in a two-year queue now. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I think I can do it. Have a crack. Yeah. And in fact, I wrote it with a guy who I'm still friends with today, um, mm. who directed it, a guy called Terry Windsor. And I found it easy. I don't mean that glibly. No. I just could do it, I suppose. You found your thing. Yeah. I realised that I was not frightened or overawed and that I, something in me was telling me that's how you do it, that's the process. And has it always been that easy ever since? You do get, no, there were periods when you dry, mm -hmm. um, which are scary, when, when you just, you know, I can't fucking write anything. I don't know what I'm doing, this is shit. I think that will come as a relief to know that you yeah. it's, go yeah, through that. Everyone, so, everyone does. And yeah. the only thing that keeps you going is, well, eventually is, yeah, I remember I've been in that situation before. Mm -hmm. And you know, you find a way out of it. What I'm uh, still surprised by is not thinking about something helps because then mm -hmm. suddenly the little bit of your subconscious that's been working away on it for you said, what about this? Yeah. And then you think, okay, Com confidence is a big part of writing. Just, just confidence. Down. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And just thinking, you, no, come on, you can do this. Keep going. Nostalgia trip. I've yeah. called this little chapter. This is Stan and Ollie. This okay. was, what, last year? Yeah. It's, it's a lovely performance from both actors, I think, and yeah. rave reviews. Why did you want to tell this story for such a long time? I, it's, it's, it's another product of reading, really. Mm -hmm. I, I always tell everyone that works with me, read. Keep reading. Keep reading, and non, non-fiction. I remember watching Laurel and Hardy with my mum and my dad normally, with my dad at home, because they were on Saturday mornings when I was a 10-year-old, 8-year-old. So they had a really special place in my heart and then I read a wonderful book and then another book and another books about their lives and mm. thought, hang on, Stan had five wives and Ollie was married four times and they were broke and they were forever gambling and, you know, Ollie was... And their lives were chaotic. But right in the middle of it all, love. It, they really did love each other. And I... So I, I fell in love with that story mm. and I knew that I wanted to tell that period when they were old and sick because that's when their love was, at the, was the greatest, when they needed each other more than anything. And that's what I responded to. Is there a story that has either got away, somebody else has 
just nabbed it from under you, or one that remains in the drawer to be told, the dream project? I suppose the story that, the film that I've always, you know, this is not, the, not answering your question classically, it's right. but it's the film that I've always would have loved to have made is Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Mm -hmm. So true, I mean, there was some true twisting, true-ish. Yeah. And just that relationship between the two of them, mm -hmm. I adored. And, I, and you know, I suppose subconsciously there's a bit of Stan and Ollie and yeah. two men. And I, I've always adored that, that film and that relationship. And I, as soon as it finished and there was the freeze frame and all the Mexican soldiers with all the rifles, they got away, didn't they, Dad? It was the first thing mm. I said. And because it's true, you? That, that's what really, really... What did you know, your dad tell you about them? I'm not ashamed. He said, <laughs> I think it would have been difficult. They might have done. Oh, he's a tactful man, yeah. isn't he? I think that's all we've got time for. So please join me in thanking Jeff Pope Thank very much. <laughs>